What's up, y'all? I'm flannel maxing today. And whenever I'm flannel maxing, you're gonna get two videos in one day. So this is gonna be a double feature. This time on the whiteboard, we have Star Plutchno, Star Platinum from JoJo's is our adventure. We're gonna be talking today about setting up primary days and secondary days. Now I'm gonna explain this in a way that even if you're new to programming, it'll make sense to you. Now, if you're new to the channel, please always check out my programming playlist if you have a question. If you have a question and it's not answered in that programming playlist or in the Q&A playlist, leave it on the most recent video that I upload so that I can see it. So primary day and secondary day. Primary means most important. Secondary means it is second to the primary day. So it's the second most important day of the week. We do this because in a week, you grow your fatigue, like you get more tired. If you have a really hard session at the beginning of the week, that fatigue is going to impact your performance on your next training session. So it's, there's something that I call the fatigue scale. That starts at the beginning of the week, it ends at the end of the week. Now, you put your primary sessions at the beginning of the week when you're most fresh and you've had two days of rest or more to recuperate. The way that most training splits are structured, so like an upper lower, for example, you go upper lower, rest, upper lower, rest, rest, right? So you always put that primary day after you've had an extended period of time to rest. Now, to piggyback off of a video that I made a couple days ago, there are people that want to train weighted calisthenics alongside the big three, so squat, bench, and deadlift. We're gonna talk about how to set up primary days in that capacity, but you're also going to be able to take that information and apply it to if you're just gonna keep your training days within a seven day training week. What I mentioned in that past video is pretty much the only way for you to be able to maximize all of those things, so squat, bench, deadlift, and then weighted pull-ups and weighted dips, is if you extend your training week out to nine days, pretty much. That's what we're gonna to speak to today. Now, as I said, you start off the week with the most fatiguing sessions. We're gonna use myself, for example. We're not gonna talk anything in terms of progression. There are other videos that we could use to talk about that. I may make another video specifically applying progressions to this, but for now, we're just gonna talk exercises, right? So part of making a split is making sure that you have the exercises that you're going to do where they need to be. And that's really the most important part of making a program. So me personally, I start off the week with primary bench press. Now for me right now, my primary bench press exercise of choice on this day is a tempo bench press. So like a slow eccentric in a long pause. After that, I'm doing some sort of back work. So for example, I'm doing body weight pull-ups directly after that bench press work. After that, I'm doing dips. Like I said, if you want to know how to implement dips specifically, watch the weighted dips and weighted pull-ups video that I just made. It's got the, uh, the big chatty fist of the North Star guy pointing at you and saying you're a chad, you look good. It's that video. After that, I'm doing triceps. I'm not doing ab work on this day because I have heavy deadlifts the day after that. Now what I found is if you're doing any sort of heavy lower body exercise, my rule of thumb in general is you work your core every day. That's true if you're not doing something like heavy deadlifts. So we have to partition the fatigue accordingly. We have a little bit of fatigue built from this primary benching session day, but not a whole ton in our lower body or really at all because we didn't work our lower body on this primary benching session. So we can put another heavy lower body lift directly after that, no days of rest. Primary deadlift day is the most fatiguing deadlift day where the muscles of your posterior chain are recruited the heaviest and the most. So we have that primary deadlift. That's gonna be conventional deadlift for me. Now, you could follow this up with either something like a front squat if you squat low bar, it could be something like a high bar squat. Me personally right now, I'm alternating between a reverse SSB and the front squat, and that's coming directly after conventional deadlifts. After that, I'm doing some sort of chest supported row, and then whatever your apical isolation is. So that could be the hip adduction machine, 
It could be hamstring curls, leg extensions, whatever you want to put in there that's an isolation movement. That's just going to really depend upon what you found to be a weakness for you. If you're new, you could honestly put any one of those in this slot because you're building your foundation. Now, something that is more for people that are of a higher strength level, someone like myself, is that you can also split your sessions into AM, PM sessions. And that's realistically what I do. So in my AM session, I'll have my conventional deadlifts, I'll do my back work, and then I'll save the front squats, the isolation, and the abs for the PM session. And that's just what I do personally. So we've done our two primary sessions. We are very fatigued from doing that. So you're gonna rest one to two days. You need that to be able to come in and do your secondary bench session as fresh as possible. We don't wanna come in here super fatigued on any one of these days. There's gonna be some fatigue, but we wanna minimize that by resting. The really cool thing about a nine day training split is that you can put two rest days directly after your two sessions. It's really, really nice. So after your one to two rest days, you're gonna come in and do your secondary bench press day. So remember that secondary means this has to be less fatiguing than this because otherwise you're just doing two primary days and that's not sustainable over a long period of time. That being said, you're picking variations that are not as fatiguing. Larson press, incline bench, and then more arm work. Now, keep in mind with primary and secondary, because we did body weight pull-ups here, we can have weighted pull-ups here, which are more fatiguing, right? So because we didn't do them here, we can do them here. That better make sense. Good rule of thumb, if you have a primary variation on one day, you're using a secondary easier variation on your secondary day and vice versa. Now in terms of your primary squats, secondary deadlifts, you're gonna have your most fatiguing squat on that day because you didn't do it on this day. Likewise, on your secondary deadlift, you're gonna have a less fatiguing deadlift variation because you did a more fatiguing deadlift variation here. Now, there's something that I call one point times five, 1.5 times frequency. It's a gigabrain term for basically saying, hey, on one day we have our main variation and on the second day we have a less fatiguing variation. That's really good for people that do not find that they can just do a heavy deadlift session and then a lighter deadlift session with both conventional deadlifts and recovery. That's what our next video is gonna be about. Um, allowing you guys to have guidance in terms of what some of those easier variations are and why. We're following up with stiff-legged deadlifts. I typically do some sort of chest supported row and then again, your applicable isolation. So that's pretty much how primary and secondary days pan out. It's very, very simple. If you have a heavy variation or a primary variation on your next training day where you're working the same muscle groups, you want to assist that primary session by either working on an easier variation, so less fatiguing variation than what you did on your primary day, or something that complements it or addresses a particular weakness that you have. Very, very simple. Our next video is gonna be about those 1.5 times frequency variations that you can use for all of the main lifts, and we're gonna talk about why that's very beneficial. As I said, when I'm flannel maxing and I got my chest out, you get two videos a day, so I will see y'all guys shortly.